Hello and welcome back to Microholder. If you like this video, please click the like button and maybe subscribe if you'd like to see more. It really helps us. Today I'm renovating this old amplifier which was dumped. I don't think it would take me long to fix this up. After some inspection, there wasn't a lot wrong with it apart from the fact that the fuse had blown in the main power supply. Now, let's have a look at the box. The box is really tatty and all of this chipboard is dried, so all the joints have come apart. Plus the vinyl covering is really tatty, so I sanded it down with some heavy duty sandpaper to get rid of all the bumps and abrasions. I managed to remove some of the vinyl, but it was such hard work I gave up in the end, I figured I'd paint over it all. Now I'm going to give it a really thorough coat of undercoat. This will be the first undercoat I'm going to give it. I'll give it a second coat when I've rebuilt the whole box. The important thing is to get it into all of the crevices and fill in the gaps in the chipboard. Now it's undercoated, I can turn my attention to putting the box together. I'm using a really strong contact adhesive. I squeeze it into the gap and then push the joint together so it all spreads out. I'm using a plastic filling knife to spread the glue out. Once it dries, both surfaces join together and bond immediately. Same for the other piece, spread the glue out and then join the two surfaces together. Once dry, the glue adheres really quick so I have to get it into position as fast as I can and then screw it down in place. I don't plan to ever take this apart again because you can remove all the components like the amp and speakers without taking the box apart. That should hold it in place. Now I'm filling all the holes and gaps with a basic filler. I'm going to seal this all in with another coat of undercoat so I don't have to use anything fancy, it's just basic poly filler. Whoops, I've covered over a hole I don't need to cover. That holds for the side bolts to hold the amp in place. Not a problem. I can clean it out later. I had to put a lot of filler on the front here where all of the chipboard had gone a bit dusty. I'm filling every little crevice and gap. The whole box took me about five hours to sand down completely. But I got a really nice smooth finish in the end. This little treble speaker, or tweeter as they call them, has only a couple of pounds on eBay. That's the negative side. And that's the positive side. It's important to get your cables in the right position. One side of this cable has a white stripe on it, which means that will be the positive. I strip the cable. and then give it a good twist. 
it's important to heat up the wire so that the solder melts on the wire and not against the soldering iron. That way you get a really good solid connection. I'm also soldering these tabs on the speaker. And now it's easy to solder the speaker in place. Bend the wire around through the hole, drag the solder across it and it seals. The amplifier cable is the same, the red cable is positive and the black is negative. So I've stripped the ends. Give them a good twist and once again I tip them with solder. Warming up the cable first and let the solder run in. Same for the red cable. It's also known as tinning. We need to solder these two tabs as well. This solder contains a flux that helps it adhere to the metal. Now another thick layer of undercoat should seal it all in. I'm going to do a top coat of a different colour. The top coat I'm going to use is a chalk based paint. It layers up really thickly and I'm giving it two coats just to make sure. It's a kind of cyanide green, I think, this one. You can lay it on really thick, really generously. The chalk in the paint makes it thicken up nicely. So after two layers, it's really robust. Then, a coat of wax is all that's needed to seal it all in. Unfortunately there's some specks in the wax which I'll have to clean out first. Once cleaned, I apply the wax with a rag and rub it in firmly. You've got to rub it in really hard because it soaks into the paint. Once it's soaked in after 24 hours, I'll give it another layer of wax. And once that's soaked in, I'll give it a really thorough polish. There's a lot of elbow grease needed for this. The best thing about this wax treatment is that the amp can take a few knocks and bangs and it won't scuff up. And even if it does, it'll still look great. Now I'm installing the amplifier, pulling the cables through first, slotting it in place. All I need to do next is bolt it from the side where those two holes were. The tweeter fits in place. 
I've already pulled the wires through here. And then it's a case of screwing it in. Now I replaced the screws I originally had because they were rusty. And these are slightly thicker, which makes them a little bit hard to put in, but it'll hold it firmly in place. The electric screwdriver makes quick work of this. And finally, the last few bolts for the Laney amplifier. I put both the positive speaker wires through the positive speaker connection and sold them in place. Then I do the same for the negative wires. There's no crossover with this system, it's really simple. Now all I've got to do is install the main speaker, position it over the screw holes, and screw it in place. Unfortunately the electric screwdriver wasn't man enough for the job, so I'm having to do this by hand. We're almost there. I also installed a 12 inch metal speaker grill to protect the speaker. I'm pretty pleased with the outcome, it looks amazing. The bright green is toned down a bit with the wax coating and it looks pretty cool. Time to test it out I think. The nice thing about the amp is it's really quiet, there's no noise at all. Apart from when I plug in my Wawa pedal. Sounds pretty good. Now all I need now is a band. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos, maybe hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching.